shop. Well, here we are on what I think is about week eight of the lockdown. I lose count of how many weeks it actually is. I'm becoming a one-man film studio. There's so many videos being made, I don't know if I'm coming or going. Anyway, for this video, I'm going to do something I've been meaning to do for a very long time. And I'm going to make an outdoor oven. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know that I've made several outdoor ovens. But this one is going to be a portable oven. So you can have it in your garden, you can put it back in the shed. If you move house, you can take it with you. That's going to be useful. My daughter, who is of the millennium generation, tells me that nobody can afford to buy a house anymore, which I can understand. So therefore, any possessions you have have got to be portable. Hence, a portable garden oven. You can take it with you as you move from house to house. If it works the way that I think it will, you'll be able to use it as an oven in the garden. You'll be able to use it as a hot smoker, a cold smoker, any other sort of smoker you want. So you can cook your dinner, you can barbecue your dinner. The ambition, if I have such a thing, I mean not only do I want to cook bread in it, but I want to have it sort of suitably temperature controlled that I can cook croissants in it. Now if I can do that, I know I've had a success. So that's the aim, that's what we're going for. Don't know if it'll work. There's one way to find out though, isn't there? So let's get on with it. So you see in front of me, or maybe you don't, I've got a big pile of steel. I spent yesterday afternoon cutting up bits of steel and finishing them off. Don't bother trying to keep notes. Um, there is a project book to go with this, and the details are along the bottom of the screen now. So you can get the project book, keep up, and then you can make one for yourself. So the first thing we need to do is to start welding up the frame. When you see it like this, you realize just how big this thing is going to be. I was a bit worried it was going to be a bit small, but uh, <laughs> it turned out fairly decent size, hasn't it? So this is our frame. This bit here is just going to be a void. I shall put something across over it here, just so you can keep some wood. This whole thing is going to be wood fired, that's the whole point of it. This bit here is going to be the firebox, and there's going to be a plate there. This bit here is the oven, and up here is going to be the chimney. There's going to be a door across here, and this is the full size of the oven. So this is going to be a big oven. You know, if you compare this to your domestic oven, this is on the big side. I mean, I measured, I measured the oven at home. This is slightly wider, it's slightly deeper. So we're getting into sort of commercial oven size. If you're going to make a commercial oven, you'd make it slightly bigger, but you probably wouldn't want to make it much bigger because that's an awful lot of area you've got to heat and we want to get it quite hot. But that's going to be a decent size. So what I'm going to do now is just carry on just welding these sort of pieces into place properly. So as you can see, Along the bottom here, I'm going to put some extra supports in. I've got one here to go here. And you, I don't know if you can see, but I've drilled and tapped these holes. And I've made them all in six. And you can spend hours measuring about how you're going to get this right. Or alternatively, a simple tip is you can bolt the casters into place. That gets them in the right place. Then you can weld that in place, take those off, and then you can do the next lot. Makes it much faster. So I'm now fitting the first of the inside panels. This is straightforward mild steel. Nothing fancy or clever. But I'm just riveting it into place. As you can see this is now quite nicely held in. I've put some angle iron on the inside here just to give this something solid to fix to. Um, now, in this gap here, we'll then put some insulation, and then there's an outer skin to go on the outside. That will help retain some of the heat inside the unit. We don't have to work super hard to get the heat inside. I mean, it's still going to have to work hard, but if we can keep it in, we'll make it more efficient. But it also stops the outside skin getting too hot and burning somebody. That's the plan, anyway.
It's starting to look quite good, isn't it? That's an awful lot of work, though. So I've taken this down off the bench. And we've got the... And in order to give a sort of a level of insulation, because we're going to work hard to get the heat into here, so I'm using this stuff which is called vermiculite. It's a natural product apparently. And more importantly it's fireproof. Which is most important. And it will just give a level of insulation so what I'm going to do now is go along and rivet this all the way around and then effectively that's that side done as you can see I now have the back fitted and I've got panels all the way around on the outside and there's insulation between them so it sounds nice and dull which is just what we want it means there's no cavity it's full of insulation so we can turn our attention now to the top. Now just like the other outside surfaces, this is going to have a double skin, so I need to get a piece of steel in the middle here, and then I've got a piece of steel to go on the top. But before I do that, I can't help thinking we need a chimney. So, I have here this piece of steel. It's just a nice thin piece of sheet steel. 250 mil across um, and I put little cuts up there and it's there which I'm going to bend and there's a couple of ways I can do it I can literally just put it on the end of here and bend it and I suspect that would work quite well um, but I'm going to get a little bit of a bend on it and then I'm going to tap it round on the anvil and that should do it at least I think it will we'll find out so here's our bit of steel. I've already given it a bit of a bend. I mean, this, this is so thin. I just need to bend it like this. Oh, look at that. When I put some rivets down the side there, I reckon that's done. So having riveted the sides, I've then got these three flanges to bang out. <laughs> that stiffens that up quite considerably. So you can see I've got three that are flattened and one that I haven't. I wanted a tight fit. I just wasn't prepared for just how tight. There's our chimney in place and it's almost square so we'll take that as a good one. <laughs> so what I now need to do is to fit panels to go on the inside of here and then one to go over the top of here. The the reason for the flange, I'm sure you've already spotted, is to hold it into place on here and then I can hold it there and drill it at the back there. So that will hold it all together and then once that's in place and all these other panels are in, that will be a lovely solid chimney. Now as you can see, I've made the top plate bigger than the actual thing itself. It's actually five mil bigger all the way around. And then the idea is once I've got it into place, I can then bend the edges around. Um, and that will help to keep the top watertight. Because the last thing you want is water to get inside and soak up in soak into all the insulation. So as you can see I've now got the top on but we've got this big lip all the way around 
And I've, I've done this deliberately because what I want to do, I, mean, I could have just left it as a lip and that will stop the rain getting in. But what I've done is I've notched it on the corners which allows me to bend this bit over. So it's just a question of going along a couple of times. And then once we get a bit of paint on that, that's much harder for the rain to get inside. That's the plan anyway. Well, this is the perfect height, really. I feel like I'm standing behind the bar. You know, if, if someone would care, just put a pint just there, I'm sure I'd be very happy. Um, we're now at the point where we've finished the basic structure. We've made a very big, very heavy, big box. Um, and a very nice, big, heavy, big box that it is too. Now we get to do the sort of slightly more interesting stuff. The, uh, the fiddly stuff, the fiddling out stuff. So one of the first things we need to do is put something on the top of the chimney. We, we need a cover. Um, well we don't really need a cover, but it's probably quite a good idea to have one. Because the last thing you want to know is if you didn't have one, you know, this is a target for birds flying overhead. Um, and there's your finest dinner underneath as a bird goes over the top. So you need to have something just to protect your dinner, really. So I've cut myself a disc, a 250 millimeter disc, which I could just sort of make some legs, stick it on like that. Does the job. It's not very interesting though, is it? We can do better than that. So what I've done is I've cut, a, I've marked out a triangle and I'm going to cut that bit out and then that will enable me to bend this. So what I need to do now is to bend it and I'll hammer it ever so slightly into shape and we'll make our little hat. It's the first time I've ever done one in steel. I've done it in copper a few times, but uh, it's a bit harder in steel. So I shall rivet, put a couple of rivets in there. In fact, really just one on the end would hold it, but then I'll hammer, hammer that round so it's slightly better. Um, but that work, that's worked out all right, hasn't it? And that makes a much nicer top for the chimney. So there you are, the cowl for the chimney. That's quite solid. That's done quite a nice job. With a coat of paint on it, marvellous. There'll be no stopping us. So the first of many coats of paint. As this is going to be going outside, but we'll spend a lot of his time outside. I mean, obviously it's going to be on wheels, so hopefully you can take it undercover when you're not using it. But uh, let's work on the theory that it will go outside and it will get in bad weather. This first layer is red oxide primer. Then it will have a coat of undercoat. And then I shall be using special paint well, I've managed to find the stuff that you use to paint steam railway engines or the boilers of steam railway engines so it's a high temperature paint I reckon it can cope with 150 degrees so that's pretty high temperature um, and more importantly is available in a range of colours you don't just have to have black Because who wants something painted black? So I'm just going to get on and paint this. 